This is a modern city, noisy, confusing, and complex. A place of friendship or loneliness, dreams or nightmares. Where the problems of society bring out the best or the worst of its citizens. And the problems are many. They are part of your own town, your own neighborhood. Poverty, crime, violence, frustration, broken and half-lived lives. Where the weak and the frantic are quick to seek relief and escape, and they seek it in many ways. One way of escape is by the use of narcotic and dangerous drugs, morphine, heroin, barbiturates, amphetamine, and marijuana. Narcotic use provides a temporary relief from a vacant or troubled life, offers first a cheap thrill, later a blinding hole which cannot be broken by the victim. The illegal purchase is easily made, and what begins as an almost innocent adventure may be the first step of a journey into darkness. And the common road to drug addiction starts with marijuana, a prelude to the more deadly drugs morphine, and heroin. Let us examine marijuana. This drug is obtained from the innocent-looking plant Cannabis indica, or Cannabis sativa, an herb of the thistle family. Cannabis has a commercial value. The stalks and stems are used in the manufacture of rope, hemp cloth, and twine, mats, and paper. The seed is valuable to the paint industry by producing an oil with a fast drying property. Cannabis has also been used in medicine to relieve pain, encourage sleep, and soothe restlessness. In recent years, however, it has been supplanted by other less dangerous drugs. The flowering top of the female plant produces a gum which contains the active constituent cannabin, the alkaloid of the drug. This substance has an intoxicating and stimulating effect on the human body. The marijuana habit has claimed its victims in Asia and the Near East for a thousand years. Known as hashish, it is often taken as a beverage or eaten as candy. Since 1934, marijuana has become a growing menace in the United States where it is mostly consumed by smoking. The average marijuana cigarette contains a dangerous amount of the drug. Like most other narcotic drugs, this one, too, has distinct, immediate, and chronic effects. Exhilaration, laughter, bloodshot eyes, and a peculiar odor from the breath are the usual symptoms of initial intoxication. There can be delirium, hallucinations, and a loss of the sense of time and space. Inhibitions are released, and often the marijuana user is involved in crime and immorality. Each day, drug addiction makes new conquests, more wasted lives, and many of the victims are young people who begin by the use of marijuana, the first link in a chain of misery. And when the user becomes a heroin or morphine addict, the misery is multiplied. He must obtain a daily supply of constantly increasing doses. Narcotic addiction costs money, much more than the average person can earn. So the addict resorts to desperate, dangerous ways, theft, robbery, and even murder. The drug addict sacrifices his whole life for his narcotic. He sacrifices his family and friends, his own body, his health. In his desperate attempt to maintain a supply of drugs, the addict rarely has sufficient food or clothing. The terrible conditions under which his compulsion forces him to live tend to slowly destroy him. Federal authorities relate that addicts die of tuberculosis at the rate of four to one compared to non-addicts, more than two to one of pneumonia, more than five to one of premature old age, three to one of brain hemorrhage, three to one of cancer and other malignant tumors, and more than two to one of a wide variety of other diseases. Continued excessive use of many drugs can create circumstances resulting in irreversible brain damage. Many drug addicts have ended their tortured lives permanently insane.
This is Judy. Judy just attended that very special party. How do you feel, Judy? Scared? Unhappy? A little late for regrets, but how did it happen? The trouble began when your parents left on that trip. They didn't want to leave you alone, yet it seemed better than having you miss school. They gave you all kinds of advice. Remember their words? Be careful, be a good girl, of course you do. But mothers and fathers are always saying things like that. Besides, you had no intention of doing anything wrong. Still, you were sorry to see them go, perhaps a little worried. You soon put it out of your mind, and that very afternoon you were off to a show. You've already forgotten the picture, but do you remember that good-looking young man? It will be a long time before you forget him. Nice girls don't allow fellows to pick them up, and you've always tried to do the right thing. But what could you do? He followed you in, and after the show, he followed you out. Fresh, wasn't he? Oh, come on, what are you afraid of? Later, well, he seemed very nice. You were calling him Joe, and it was almost as though you had known one another for a long time. Naturally, you had a date. Here, have a cigarette. No, Joe. Come on, this is a special one. You know the one I told you about? Come on now, relax. Learn to live. Take just one puff and see if you like it. Come on. You're not scared. Come on, try it. Try it now. You did well that night, Judy. You used your head, but you were frightened and alone. And despite everything, you liked Joe. Didn't you feel good when the phone rang the next day? Oh, Joe, I thought I'd never hear from you again. You glad I called? Oh, yes, Joe. I'm so sorry about last night. You mean you're sorry you didn't torch up? Don't worry, baby. I got a stack of fine stuff. Want to blow tea with me tonight? Don't talk like that, Joe. Not over the telephone. I'm in a phone booth. Pick you up tonight at 7. Okay? I really don't think I should go out with you anymore. What's the matter? Don't you want to see me anymore? You be home at 7. See you later. Sunday morning. That's your church, Judy. You weren't there. Some people missed you, wondered where you were. Yes, you were home, feeling guilty, ashamed, and yet even more lonely now. You felt so low, nothing seemed to help. If only you could snap out of it, escape these feelings. There was one way called Joe. The rest is just a bad dream, but one with permanent effects. You have a record now, Judy. Everybody knows about you. That's bad enough. But it could have been worse. It could have gone on. From Joe and his reefers to perhaps someone else, and heroin or morphine. This is what it could have been like, Judy.
This girl has just started to show withdrawal symptoms from addiction to heroin. She started with marijuana too. Had no intention of going any further, but they do go further. Before she realized it, the continual acceptance of the marijuana had deadened her willpower, weakened her resistance, until sticking a needle into her body, taking heroin, no longer seemed the dangerous, desperate act that it is. This girl, hours further along the stages of withdrawal, suffers in a way that few young people can even imagine. She too, a few months ago, thought she could take it or leave it alone, but she couldn't. No one can. The tragedy is thousands of young people are being caught in this vicious trap regularly. How would you like to be this one, Judy? This is her third day of it. You don't need to ask how it feels. She's telling you. Come on, Judy, we have more to see you. How would you like to face her future? She might as well be dead, probably would rather be. This is what your future could have been, Judy. How do you like it? Her life ruined, her friends all gone, her looks gone, her health wrecked. Is it worth it, Judy? This is Judy's story. In some ways unusual, in some ways very ordinary. There are many more like it. What can we, the people of America, do about such cases? The Narcotic Educational Foundation provides an answer. The foundation fights the narcotic problem on all fronts. A speaker's bureau supplies trained lecturers for use in schools, churches, and civic gatherings. A radio and television department prepares special material. The foundation's department of research has brought together books, facts, pamphlets, and other recorded materials to form a valuable lending library. Full information on all narcotic laws is available and facts are prepared and presented to our legislators. Aids are created for law enforcement. An educational department arranges displays in schools, promotes discussion groups and essay contests, and encourages healthy recreation. Pamphlets, books, displays, and posters are available to all civic organizations. A united front against drug addiction, crime, and juvenile delinquency is conducted by the foundation in the school, in the church, and in the home. But all this is still not enough. The narcotic menace continues. The national crime rate is still rising. Every 15 seconds, a serious crime is committed in the United States. A murder every hour, a forcible rape every half hour, a robbery every six minutes, an assault every four minutes, a burglary every 39 seconds. Crime continues to outstrip the population growth by over four to one and the arrests of juveniles has more than doubled in the last 10 years. Every year, over 400,000 young persons aged 17 and under are arrested and fingerprinted. It costs the American taxpayer millions of dollars a year to support its prison population. The Narcotic Educational Foundation needs the help of your community, your educators, and your church. Religious and moral training is necessary to aid in the fight against narcotics. Protect your children. Accept your responsibility in this campaign. Do your part to stamp out this vicious threat to the youth of America. Can we count on your help? Remember, it is up to you.